I'm Elaine Stevens and I want to welcome you to Artbeat. From the world on the other side of the bridge, a world filled with casinos and a lot of commercialism, to this magnificent world at Shearwater Pottery. That's where we're going to take you today, right here on Artbeat. I happen to be holding one of the many pieces, some of which were found right here in these marshes right after Katrina. This family has made a remarkable recovery and continues to produce some of the most magnificent artwork here in South Mississippi. You're going to meet some very extraordinary people today right here in Artbeat. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Back to Artbeat, we have a real treat for you. This man will not stop. I've been around a lot of people who are intense about their work, but this gentleman, Peter Wade Anderson, uh, the grandson of the founder of Shearwater Pottery, mm -hmm. is hard at work, but we're gonna interrupt him a little bit here. Okay, Bye. Peter, thank you for having us. I know that we're sort of imposing on your artistry here, but tell us what you're doing at this very moment. Um, throwing on the wheel. Throwing on the wheel, okay. Yeah. But uh, there's a whole process that st that begins way before this. There is. Um, we generally, we dig our clay, a local clay, up in Loosedale, Mississippi. So the clay is actually from Loosedale, Mississippi, wow, um, okay. And we mix that with other, other materials, uh, Tennessee ball clay, feldspar, some silica into something called a made body. We mix it into a liquid called slip. And that we put through a filter press where it is, the water is filtered out. Now is all that done right here in this very building? It is indeed, yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll be looking at the steps of that as you take us through the building and you can point those various things out to us. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you're throwing the wheel. Is that what we call it? Throwing on the wheel. Throwing uh, on the wheel. Making a pot. It's a good thing I'm not doing this because I can't even get the terminology right. But at any rate, this, I've watched him for the last, what, 10 minutes or so, and it's amazing the transformation of this clay, this ball of clay, into something so magnificent that has been here since literally 1928. Right? That's right. That's so tell right. us a little bit about the history of Shearwater. Uh, my grandfather started in 1928, and I don't know what to say. Uh, well, you've inherited just kept this beautiful tendency, have you not? Yes, I have. <laughs> yes. And when did you start? I started. I started working out here about 20 years ago. 20 years ago. So you're what four? No. <laughs> no, I, I was. I was 11. Okay. So, hold it, actually 22 years ago. Wow. So, years ago. I'd started working just a couple days during the summer. Uh -huh. Did you know then that you had a passion for this? I wouldn't have called it a passion at the time. Okay. I wasn't, I was interested in it, but uh, I, th I think I had other ambitions as well. Do we know what those were? Uh, well, I was always interested in architecture, but uh -huh. was... So that summer job, that 11-year-old child, has 22 years later turned into a main force on the South Mississippi coast as a very well-known potter. How does that feel? Uh, <laughs> never really thought about it before. None of you Andersons think like that. I mean, you're all so fascinating and and fascinated by your art, but at the same time you do it with such a sort of a lackadaisical kind of thing. Well, one, you know, one I mean, thing, we, we don't really consider it that much of an art, my father and I, it's more of a craft. It's a craft, okay. And sometimes we create art, but uh, So mainly. what is the difference in that? I mean, we hear those two terms together, arts and crafts, but what, what is the difference? We set out to make something 
functional. Okay. You know, that's we want to make something that that's beautiful to look at, but functional too. Okay. So, and I'm not sure what the direct line is between the two, but that's a very interesting <laughs> philosophy, Peter. Um, now, how long does it take you to create one piece? Uh, depending on the piece, not that long. You know, this piece will probably take uh, maybe 10 minutes. So it takes 10 minutes when you're throwing it on the wheel, and then you have to bake it, correct? Well, I, it goes on the wheel, and when it gets what's called leather hard, mm -hmm. we put it back on the wheel and trim it. And trim it, okay. Right. And from there, we let it dry. And then it goes into the kiln and it gets fired one more one time, called a bisque firing. Okay. And is and the kiln here on this property? It is. Right. And from the bisque firing, we glaze it. We take it out of the bisque firing, we put our glaze on it, whatever colors we want. That famous sheer water glaze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. It is. <laughs> and uh, then we put it back in the kiln yeah. and it gets fired one more time. And uh, when it comes out, it's ready to go. So you fire it a total of three times? Two times. Two times, okay. Sorry. You fire it a total of two times, and the final firing is ready to go. And that, and that is when it goes to the shop down, down the lane there. Right. Okay. Now, what is the yield here? I mean, you're working constantly. Do you set a goal about how many you have to create on a certain number of days, or how does that work exactly? As much as we can. That's, <laughs> okay. Well, depending on the piece, right. for instance, the mugs he's doing, he's going to be making about 80 of those. Now, I'm not that fast yet myself, mm -hmm. but he'd make 80 of those, and he started about an hour before that lunch. Was your, that's your dad? That's my dad. And he, you're saying he's going to make 80 of those, and that's because he's been at it how long? Uh, you'd have to ask I him that. I will ask him that. But, I will uh, certainly ask him that. But just... So he'll, he'll make 80 of those in a day. And how many will you make of these? And, well, I, I've been working on this maybe an hour. Well, no, probably about 45 minutes. So you'll make? Five. Five. <laughs> All right. So it's but this a, is a slower piece. The larger the piece, the longer it takes. Right, right. A little but, bit uh, more involved. Where, where, where he'd make, say, 80 of those mugs, I'd probably make 40. Now, after it goes to the shop, do you, you are you you work with uh, other family members in pricing everything out, and how does that work exactly? My aunt Margie runs the showroom, right. and the prices are determined by her. So it's a family operation, everyone. I mean, it's been here since 1928. Obviously, the success of it speaks for itself. And uh, I think we're going to talk to your dad right after this commercial break. We'll be right back with more art beat right after this. All right. Welcome back to Artbeat. I promised you a family affair, and here it is. This is Father James Anderson, father of Peter Wade Anderson, grandfather of little Mac that we saw, or Connell, is whichever name we're going to choose for him when he becomes an artist. So, James, how did you get started in all this wonderful work? I got started working here as a, in need of a summer job. There you go. When I was a student. Money dictates many things. Money dictates, <laughs> and just the, the words you need to work somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, I don't remember if I really started summers from high school or just after high school. But anyway, that's how I started and then just eventually became full time. Now, how is this taught? Do you teach one another? Because it's a whole range of family members. Is that how, that's how it is? Or 
there you, a formal you learn education? learn just watching, watching and doing. It's none of us. My father went to, to a school for glazing, Alfred University, in New York. And your father was Peter Anderson. Okay. But pottery can mostly be just learned from experience and watching somebody that knows how to do it. <clears throat> and that's how I did it. I just watched and learned. And for quite a while, I just did the very basic things like mixing clay and unskilled types of making pottery. And just finally, I got to making pots on the wheel. And How now, long now I do whatever needs to be done here right. with help. How long did it take to develop the skill that you have? How many years have you been doing this? How long have I been yeah, doing this? Yeah, I know that's personal. Since the 1960s. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. See how he got around that? He's not going to tell me how old he is. That's too much math. <laughs> too much math. But I tell you, the yield that you put out, according to mm -hmm. your son, he's, he's amazed at it still, and he works with you. So what is this number 80 that I hear that you put out t t today, the number Oh, the number 80. Okay, I was thinking 80 because last year was our 80th anniversary. Oh, well, that's a good number. And we had a commemorative mug with 80 on the label. Oh, we'll have to get a shot of that. But the 80 is just... It just worked out. That's how many mugs I made this afternoon. Because in one afternoon, 80 mugs. Well, I started before lunch. I think and I made 15 of them before lunch. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's so is, is it, how do you describe the work that you do? I mean, what, what are you thinking to yourself? Is, is it meditative? Is it tedious? What? It requires focus when you're throwing. Yes. It's every time you move your hands, most of the time, most of the moves you make, mm -hmm. you're right on the edge of messing it up because the clay is yeah. too thin or, or close to too thin. If it's not close to too thin, then it's probably too heavy. You've come so to know the texture very well. Well, you have to feel how thick it is. So what is the casualty rate around here? <laughs> it's different on different days. Uh, yeah. You know, if you can't focus, sometimes it's okay. a little higher. Right. But really, it's not high at all. Uh, Negligible. Negligible. Yeah. Well, Most of the time when a piece of clay goes on the wheel, a pot comes off almost every time. As a child growing up here in South Mississippi, I can remember having first discovered Shearwater and hearing about those pots that didn't make it and the fact that the family paved a path to the water's edge with that. Well, that's unloading the kiln. Okay. Some firings are, some firings are especially with the old kiln that we fired, mm -hmm. Sometimes a firing would be kind of disappointing, which by that I'm talking maybe you'd lose between five and ten percent. But and, is it true that and that's, really that's did really, that then, huh? Well, in the very beginnings, you know, when he was, when my father Peter was, was learning before I was here, there was probably some pretty bad ones. And that's when the path got paved, probably. Hard to believe that there were any but, uh, bad shear water But, uh, but every, every, po every pottery has what we call a trash pile, and most potters now would call a, a shards pile. The shards pile. Shards is broken pots. Yes, well, I'll but, take uh, those shards, and James. That's, <laughs> and the, I'll make something out of those shards. And the trash pile <laughs> is what became the, the path that you're talking about. Oh, how beautiful. What a great mm. story that is. Where are we standing right now? Tell us where we are. These are molds of molds. As Those you probably know, we do casting, slip casting, uh -huh. throwing, and jiggering. And these are molds for making molds when the old molds wear out. It's a positive, you know, instead of, a, a mold is a negative, but these are a positive, as you can see. Right. Well, it seems like everything in here is positive, but I, when, then what do I know? Well, positive <laughs> as in a positive image as opposed to a... Right, I understand yeah, what right, you're saying. Right. <laughs> Now, I see a beautiful bowl up there that has some painting on it. So what is that one up that way? I think that's something Mac Anderson painted, probably. It's, it got relocated after Katrina. It used wow. to be over in that building over there, I think. Well, now, speaking mm -hmm. of that ugly girl, mm -hmm. Katrina, y'all suffered a great deal during that storm. Did yeah, we, had, we did. We lost a lot. Well, I heard that um, also that the Mary C. O'Keefe was able to house you and become your sanctuary temporarily. We moved in there. It's hard to remember time sure, then as I it is. Now. But I'm thinking we were in there by November. Well, how probably. long did it is take? Is that about right, Peter? A few and months, then, yeah. And then we were there. For 
few months, right? I'm not sure. It seemed like a long time at the time, but it okay. might have. We might have been out here by. I don't know. You don't remember? January or February or something. Of, well, at I any guess rate, there was a lot of damage here. And but but anyway, we did a, we did a good bit of pot set, Mary C. Yeah. We did. So what did it take to rebuild out here? What was required of you and your family in order to do that? Young, energetic people. But, I mean, it looks like it was never Literally. damaged. I mean, it really doesn't look like it went through anything. Well, if it. you look at the floor, you see over there, you see siding from that building over there that mm -hmm. went away. And there's some original siding right here that we're standing on. And then over there on the other side is some one by 12 pine boards from where somebody was using a wood miser down the road here when we were rebuilding and couldn't oh, okay. find the size boards we wanted. So it, it took a lot to put it back together. Yeah, we, we had resources in the form of, like I said, young energy, well, family I, members. I, what has always struck me... And volunteer. And a lot of volunteers. And we yeah, had volunteers. Which we had throughout the coast mm -hmm. to help us right. all. But what has always struck me about your family um, through the decades is the sense of humility you have about your work. And yet you do, you do it with such finesse, but at the same time there's this feeling of almost a shy disregard for the public sense of awe, <laughs> if you know what I mean. We just don't talk about it. We know it's good. There you go. Right. Don't you just love that? I like a, we, a family with confidence. We, now, what do you just, foresee the future of this of this wonderful business enterprise to be? I guess that. That boy over there, he's pointing right at Peter. What about the little man? Do you think he'll That's pick up in his too soon to say. There's yeah. another grandchild right there. Well, before we say uh, goodbye to you and go on to the last area right. of the Shearwater area here, the Shearwater Pottery Show, room, I want to ask you what you remember about your father and his creations and how this all came to, to pass. Anything stand out in your mind about that? First thing that comes to mind is he was capable of anything you wanted to do, from building boats to keeping bees to catching whatever kind of fish you wanted to be, making any kind of pot he wanted to make, mm. to just one of those very capable people. And his pots, he had a a wonderful eye for form. His pots were never stiff looking or clumsy in any way. They always looked just like they should look. So that's one reason we might sound a little humble. We have sort of a tough act to follow. So we'd be really sort of out of line talking about how good we're doing now when we're not going to compare to that. That's such a beautiful way to, to remember your father, though. <laughs> we all have those father stories, don't we? I'm sure we do. <laughs> yes, we yeah. do. Well, we're going to take a bit of a tour around here, and then we're going right. to come back with more Art B right after this message. You want to know what I was making today? Yes. All right. Yes. Are Apparently, we're not done yet. All right. Are you familiar with the uh, Peter Anderson Festival in Ocean Springs? Are we ever. All right. Are you familiar with the mugs that we make at yes, Shearwater? Yes, yes. Well, there's the first batch of them. I just, oh, my. That's what I was making this afternoon. Okay, so that was what you started doing for the November Festival. Right. And and I, that's, I that's started on those today. Wow, okay. So that's those mugs that that he, he got on camera a while ago. Well, everyone out there, you're going to get the first glimpse of the Peter Anderson Festival mugs right here today. But we're not going to show you what the label looks like. You're going to okay. have to come get one. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and James is going to be sure to sell you one. In November, what's the date? What's this the date? is first full weekend. Yeah, the first yeah. full weekend in November. All right. I think 7th and 8th. All right. Well, we'll be more, <laughs> excuse me, cut that. You will edit that, right? <laughs> we'll be back with more Artbeat right after this. Thank you.